Um, so you tell me what was involved in take home exercise two. I think I'll I'll uh, call up the model at issue, and you walk through some steps with this model. Uh, what did those steps involve? Anyone? Hmm? Yes, uh, 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 Ken. Okay. The model involves uh, basically making a link our patients who have been sick and making them basically they would be susceptible again. And That's seeing right. Seeing what um, things come up, what expected. That, that's right. Some unexpected phenomena or emergent phenomena. Um, when I say emergence, what to what am I referring? Anyone? Anyone remember? What does it mean for to say something is emergent? And that comes out of the model, but it's not something we specified for the brethren. Yeah, it's not something that's pre-specified in the model. It's not hardwired into the model. It's not directly. You know, not something that's uh, uh, placed consciously in the model, and almost and and by definition, it's not something that can be simply reduced to the obvious sum of the things that are defined directly in the model, or the average of them, which is the property of a linear system. If we have a linear system, we just have. I I put it on. Oh wow! Over here they have markers. That's that's right. Um, we have this situation. You remember this f of a plus f of b. So if we want to sit, consider how the system responds with each piece um, to a sum of pieces, we just consider how it responds to each piece in isolation, and and that gives us the picture. I'm I'm glossing over some things, so simplifying it a bit. But um, but the idea is that an emergent pattern is something more than that. It's something where we don't have these two things being equal. Okay. Um, so um, this 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 uh, model did exhibit emergence, and as was as Ken had mentioned, it depicted some theory of personhood, right? Um, that involve people going through different stages of infection and then the infectious stage exposing other people who are next to them in a grid and situated in a much bigger, bigger grid. But in the original model, the original theory involved once they recover from this infection, they're permanently immune to it. And they'll never get infected again. But you added a transition. You 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 elaborated that theory to posit, to postulate, to say, well, to hypothesize um, that people could lose immunity at the point. Um, and uh, how did you do that? How did you encode this in this model? Uh, okay, let's see. And seriously. Right. So we so we added a transition. And in short, we, we changed the structure of the model. Before, in your take-home exercise one, you changed the assumptions about parameter values, right? Um, you you altered the assumption regarding how quickly people recover from infection. Remember that? Fast infection, slow infection. Um, and that altered model behavior. Remember, we had like a thicker set of infectives around the ring. If, if people stayed infected for longer, they kind of hung around, they were infected uh, for a longer period of time. So the, the front of infection is going on, but some of them behind that front, even they were infected 10 days ago, but they're still infected. 14 days ago, they're still infected. Um, so there's a thicker band that emerged. Um, that was changing parameter values within the same theory. You just kind of tweak parameter values, and it led to some differences. But more profound than this is what to what Circe is referring, to, which is changing the structure. 
one small step for a person, a giant step in terms of significance, in terms of changing model possible behavior. And I say this because the emergent behavior from this model is altered in a notable way. And we're going to see this, are we not? Indeed. Okay, so I'm going to go over here and I am going to call up the palette. And we've been noting in the palette, I think it's uh, this one here, yes. um, uh, that there are these different pieces we can add into the canvas. And, and I go to this one here because it's, it's, it's most commonly used in agent-based modeling. And this is an example, you now know, of an agent-based model. We have a population of individually distinguished agents that interact with each other in some environment, right? That's what we have here, right? This is a theory of a particular agent, right? And, and for those of you, I think most of you have taken in 270 and learned about object-oriented programming, and you recognize that this is, we think of this as like the shape of the cookie cutter. There's many particular instances of it that are particular cookies, right, that are made from that shape. This is a class, and there's many instances of the class. I think for those who have been through 270, that could be a familiar notion, right? A class and instances of us, objects of the class. And indeed, that's the metaphor by which, in any logic, you build these models. So this is a class. We call it the person class. And we're going to now alter that theory about the person class by dragging in a transition. Okay. And I didn't want to take the time to get set up and butts with mirroring, so I'm just uh, going to crane my head and drag it in here. Ah, so I, I haven't dragged it. Hey, get down there. Okay, you're going to see me trying to operate this almost blind. Okay, so I'm going to drag that, and I'm going to, even though I'm only seeing it from the side, I think it looks hideous. So at the cost of flailing, I'm going to, Try it like that. Okay. Um, now, this transition characterizes an action by which this model can change state. So, a state chart, if you think about it here, it characterizes with respect to a particular concern, in this case, in fact, the set of possible states you can be. An agent can, with respect to infection, can either be susceptible, infectious, or recovery. You get, are you comfortable with that notion? You give an agent, in this space, you give an agent with either susceptible, infectious, or recovery. Are you, are you comfortable with that notion? But more than that, if they chart characterizes the actions that can change the state, and it characterizes them through, no less, such transition. Mm -hmm. And those transitions specify a possible change that can occur, in this case, from recovered to susceptible. But they also encode the rules that govern those changes, namely under what conditions that that action will occur. And I'm going to change it to occur from the default to occur after 100 days what, what does this mean? What does that 100 mean? I remind you of the unnamed model with the days. And remind me your name? There. That's right. That's right. So if, if they are in the recovered state, the state whence this transition comes, state from which this transition is heading up, if they're in this state, a hundred days after entering it, if they haven't left for some other reason already, they'll leave via this transition. After exactly a hundred days, mm -hmm. we're going to get into this in subtle piece of this later. Hazard rates versus the chances per unit time versus timeouts. Here, it's after exactly a hundred days. Okay, so so we've altered the structure of this model to cause it loss of meaning. Mm -hmm. And if I were artful about this, 
um, I would have run the model first to remind you of its behavior. I think we all know how it behaves. So I'm actually uh, not going to spend much time in that, but I am going to go do it just so in this recording, we have it right on hand. Okay. So I'm going to run this baseline scenario, which should really be called baseline. I, I stand remiss for not having that. Um, yeah, this room is not um, overcooled, is it? Okay, did I did I press run? What happened? Hey, hey. Uh, here, oh, I see, it appeared on the wrong window. Okay, okay, well, that's good. Um, so I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. Hey, come on. Get it on there. Okay, and we're going to run it. Notice I have the developer panel open on the right, so it actually tells me something about the time. So it's spreading. Remember this? Remember this? And we saw emergent behavior coming. There's this ring, and, and there's a whole story about that, and the recovered from the center, and the uh, the ring reflected contact with these susceptibles and infected, so well, new people were getting infected. You remember this, right? Quite well. This is the baseline, the baseline, right? If I ran this out full tilt till the final time, what will we see? What will we see at the final time of this model? Very well. All gray, right? Yeah. It'll be all gray. Why all gray? What does gray mean? Recovery, right? Everyone will be recovered. And so I am going to go down and put into virtual mode and the machine may struggle mightily, but almost all good. What happened? Why in the argument? What happened? So, good theory, excellent theory, but models have a way of refining our theory because they challenge our thinking, but tools for thinking more deeply, more reliably, more quickly about, uh, about the world. Yeah, I guess. So, uh, Mr. Bittani. Okay. Uh, that, I mean, that could be a real world implication of that. This model doesn't have homes. This model, does, this particular model, doesn't have homes. It doesn't have you know particular places. But what happened is what I think you're referring to before they got it. Done. That's really, yeah. And and you could say, well, an analogous situation in the world could be that plausible where someone's at home and, you know, they just stay in their apartment and people around them have COVID-19 and they recover and, and they never affect that person. Possible. And and that did occur. It, the, the, the situation is such that only one person, it wasn't hundreds like that, right? It was just one. Okay. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it, it helped us refine our theory. And by and large, yes, uh, virtually everyone remained, um, uh, was infected and remained um, uh, persistently recovered. Okay, so we, I just added that back in. Um, that was the baseline we looked at. Now I put this in, this innovation. And what do we see now? You tell me. You've already run this thing. You tell me. What do we see? Um, I'm trying to draw. Uh, yes. Ethan? Ethan? Yes. Ethan. Okay, yeah, thank yeah, you. The rings expanding as people recover, and then uh, old infection kind of starts to fire again, and you get more rings that expand out. Okay, uh, so excellent start. So these rings expand outward. You said people recover. In this ritual model, people recover, but I think what you mean is people oh, wane and immune. went from recovered to susceptible. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Which is, um, they lose their immunity, they lose their protection, which is a real world thing, by the way, for COVID 19. It, it's a real world thing for most infections. And things like measles, chicken pox, measles mostly protects you for life, but chicken pox comes back in later life as well. Anyone know? Or set of zoster virus. It's the same virus. It reactivates unless, and you can protect yourself against it by getting shingles, uh, shingle shots. Uh, it turns out being exposed to shingles through life can also boost your immune system to protect you. So, uh, interesting. Um, but of course, there'll be a lot more people who remember it. Okay. Um, okay. Um, we have a long 
So, um, uh, okay. So, uh, I heard waves. Um, anyone else want to comment while I'm setting this up to run? Besides waves, yes. Uh, name? Hit. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, so you're saying it reached a constant. Okay. Uh so so you're saying it's in balance? Yeah. Okay, that's that's interesting. Let's we'll see if see see uh, if we observe this here. Now I know something is wrong here, and you're gonna tell me what's wrong. What's wrong? The arrowhead is not the arrowhead is not connected. It should be what? Green. Green. It needs to be green. Right? Um just like right now outside, the grass is green. Later on, it will be white outside, right? Um, yes. Yes, Cersei. Uh, right now we're running, I meant to be running Maine. Uh, uh, sorry, what this says, simula, it's actually saying all of these will simulate Maine, but I mean to be running this middle one called simulate. Right. Well, it was from the, the base and not from the I actually had it stabilize uh, after three waves. Uh, yes, it can stabilize. It it sometimes takes more than three. Excellent. Yeah, 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 that's right. Um. So yes, there is, uh, Head and you are exactly right that there can be an equilibrium state. We actually saw the equilibrium in the last one too. It had all recovered except for one uh, susceptible, for example. Okay, looks pretty similar to before, right, so far. Why does it look so similar to before? Because, yeah. Yeah, we're still in the first 25 days, no one's, no one's what yet? No one's uh, lost their immunity and become, become susceptible, right? So yeah, it's gonna look very similar, right? Um, okay, so we're, we're running it, now we're at like 40 days. Is that, should there be any real difference yet in, in patterns? No, no. Again, simulation models help you think more consistently about this, double check your understanding. Okay, now we're coming up to 55. We'll try to speed this up. Here we go. Okay, 70, okay, 80, 90, okay. And now what's going on? What's happening, folks? What's happening? Okay, okay. So these are susceptible. Who's following them? Infection. But in order for that wave of infection to start, something has to happen. Takes two to tango. Yes, Ken. There has to be some infection lingering that's brought into. Look at this. I mean, it's not a race, right? Like, how quickly can the susceptibles, you know, uh, sort of spread outwards, as a result of waiting their immunity? Can they catch up with the residual infection, or, or does the infection disappear, disappear before they catch up? And here, it's reached a steady state, as Het said, right? Um, does it always happen? Always happen in a totally predictable way? Uh, well, I will, I'm going to now reveal the horrible truth, okay? Actually, it's not a horrible truth. It's just a more refined understanding. You tell me, if, if I run this model many, many times, do I expect to see exactly the same result? No. Um, amongst other things, who a given, a given effective sends this, this exposure message to will be different, it turns out. So, so if you click on this, click on that um, right here. Come on over here. Come on. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. Why am I? Sorry, folks. I'm craning my neck, but go click on infection here. Here. Um, it's sending it to a random neighbor. Mm -hmm. But if you look at how this scenario is defined, you actually have some choice in the matter of whether the pseudo-randomness 
is completely reproducible given the same model and the same assumption, or if the random sequence will be different every time you try. Okay, so right now it's actually fixed. What that means is if I run it again and again, I'm going to see exactly for this signal. If I change it to be random seed here, now, now we're actually allowing happenstance each time, a different happenstance each time. It's not always going to be the same, given that the model has these stochastics. When I say stochastic, what do I mean? Anyone? Randomness over the top. Yeah, randomness over the time. It's uh, variable over time. So I'm running one now. I'm, I'm running it again, but with uh, allowing for variability among these different runs, right? And and what's going on here? You tell me. Where is it? Where'd it go? Sorry. Um, there are no There's like a gray. Um, like that. Is there a gray one somewhere? Yeah. No, it's not spreading. There it is. There it is. There it is. What happened? Yeah, there, someone recovered before it could spread, before that person spread it to others, right? Let's try running it one more time. Hey, hey, oh man, what what I do? what I do? Okay, did I delete it? Okay, okay, let me, control Z is your friend. Um, Did I put it back or no? <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Um. And let's make sure it's still set to random. Uh, nope. Okay, I, control Z undid that. Okay. Um, I could run it again and I'd see a different effect. So a lot of the times models we work with are stochastic. And what this means is each time we run it, if, if the model incorporates these, these stochastics indeed, each time we run it, uh, we'd expect a different outcome. And in order to do reliable science with these, in order to arrive at reliable conclusions, we need to run collections of these things, so-called ensembles of these. Um, and we will typically perform statistical analysis of these in order to understand reliable patterns, uh, patterns that are that are um, that are reproducible and, and regular that are orderly in, in terms of what they're telling us across all across these different runs of it. Okay, so we've we've seen some changes there. Now I had asked you in this model to then vary this time to lose uh, infection from 25 days from 100 to 25 days down down to 25. I, I said make it get a quarter of its previous value. What's the effect here? You tell me. How does it uh, say? The structure gets lost. And what you said there is actually a great signal. So I want to highlight this one. We were talking about modifying the structure of this model. Um, Okay, we we're talking about modifying the, the structure of the model, like adding this transition. But that induces structure and behavior, like these rings, like the spread outward, like the fact it goes to certain equilibria that are in balance. These are aspects of structure that come out of the structure of the model. We say in modeling, structure of the model determines behavior. And often those behaviors have patterns in themselves that are really structured. But why those patterns are structured with different models? And here what we're seeing is actually just changing it from to a quicker recovery can actually make a big difference in, in some times as well. Um, so we're going to change this. Uh, and we've changed it to 25 here, and we're going to run it now. Okay. Um, so change it to 25 days and we'll run it out. Okay. Time goes on. Again, be no different from the original model because it's still 
before the time where anyone could possibly lose their immunity. The earliest possible time could, someone could lose their immunity in this model is time what? 100, right? Or 12, now 25. 25, yeah, now 25. Now 25. Um, because they would have had to have gotten infected immediately in the model. And then, okay, so now we start to see, just like that, uh, you know, um, sort of thinner, thinner ones. Um, there's not as much spacing between these waves, right? Um, and people start losing their immunity when there are a lot of what around, a lot of infected. And so you get this kind of miasma, this kind of mixing, you know, messy, messy interweaving of what you might think of as roughly waves, but which, you know, as soon as someone's losing immunity, they can pretty quickly often get infected. Not not everyone, but um, many of them have an infected nearby that can infect, them, right? And and we lose this clear structure of successive waves, just like this, right? With a hundred, you get these very distinctive waves because there's this long period of time. The wave is propagating upward, and the earliest time that someone got infected from that wave could get could lose immunity and get infected again is a hundred. Previously, it was a hundred times, right? You get it spread out, and only a few of those would have contact with infected, so sometimes it would die out. Now. You, you lose your immunity after 25 days, you're very likely to get infected again soon. There's not really the spacing between waves, as they said, it, and it's kind of mixed. Um, it, it's much less structure in, in terms of wave structure. That you, see. you appreciate that? Do you, you get that point? I'm not saying you all want that, but you, do, you, do, you rec do you recognize what I'm saying? Things are, are more intermixed now. There's not as much space now. So you can see this, this interplay, the structure of the model. The structure of the model, this is important. The structure of the model makes the modes, the possible modes of behavior possible. Without loss of immunity, mm -hmm. without loss of immunity, are you going to get waves of infection? Is that even possible? No. You're never going to get even, even uh, taking the settings exactly right. You're never going to get multiple waves of infection if people can't lose immunity, right? Because what well, lays the groundwork for the next wave is that they're susceptible to infect. If you do allow waves of infection, the parameter values matter for what structures come out just like they. Um, so there's this interplay of kind of model structure more deeply, what modes are possible. Model particular assumption parameter values more specifically, the dictation patterns. But these patterns can be very good. But they emerge from the model. There's a lot of patterns in the world that we see, that we study. So a number of people in the ICU from, from COVID-19, number of people passing away from tuberculosis, number of kids tragically in a, in a foremost tragedy in, in the public health area against polio. Now, um, these emerge from underlying systems that we can understand using these sort of tools. And those patterns that emerge can be studied, but we have to remember that they, like the shadows we cast on the ground, are not the reality of the truth. They're coming from an underlying reality. Much like those marks on the pop quiz, on the on quiz zero, um, you know, on questions on probability, those came out of some underlying understanding students had, and it was manifested, it was hinted at, whispered at by any one question. But it's it's telling us something about the underlying situation. And and these are some of the ways this alludes to some ways in which statistics in in this modeling about the underlying behavior of the system work together. And we'll come back to that. It's of great importance in the data.
for example, and big data. Um, models like this can help us really make rich use of, of big data. Okay. Um, so I think we've we've had some good discussion here, but I want to take this a wee bit further. Because after all, you've come a wee bit further for this class. So I want to introduce you to another way you use models. We've been using models here to help us think through the implications of assumptions, assumptions about faster or slower recovery, assumptions about if people could lose it. And all those things are, are, are really important. But another thing that we want to do is use models to help make the world better, help bend the curve, and help, help lower the burden of infection. Okay? Things that we can actually influence. We may ask what if questions about how does the world is that one? How does, how does this is the underlying structure? And we learn from that. But I'm going to show you something now with the same model where we're using it to reason about possible interventions. So I'd like you to highlight, I'd like you to, with this model, with that, with that little uh, extension, um, I'm going to change it back to 100 days here. Okay. Here, we'll make it change this back. So it has this extension, but we're going to change it back to 100 days. Here we go. Mm -hmm. I would encourage folks to follow along in your computers. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think it, it enriches the learning. And I would welcome if you get really fascinated by stuff that you see, feel free to explore it more. You know, like, I'm, that's okay. That's that's that 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 can be good if it if it really intrigues you. Uh here I'm gonna run it with this hundred day loss of And again, what do we expect from here? You did it at home, and we did it in a few minutes ago in class. What do we expect to see in terms of broad dynamics, broad behavior over time? What do we expect to see? What's the dynamic behavior coming up there? If we ran it far enough, what would we see? Very much. Waves of sometimes it will die out, it'll cut them short even before the first wave or before the second wave, because it be comforts the first. But often we'll see multiple waves, right? Um, okay. Now I'd like you to pause this model. And there's a little button down there. I think it's this one right here. And I just want to bias a bit of time. I want to draw your attention to this area up here to the right. Okay. And this relates to interventions. This relates to, to ways we can intervene or we can we can change things in the model. So for example, we could drag here, we could say, okay, we wanna we want to immunize a certain number of people through uh, a campaign. So we're going to set it to immunize about 5,000 people. And I'm not going to get it exactly right. Uh, yeah. And when we press this button, perform random immunization, it's going to basically go through people in the population and Vaccinate them in the sense that if they're susceptible, now they're going to be recovered. You don't see the results immediately because it just doesn't have to color them yet. But I pressed, I, I dragged this over. What did I do? I dragged over to 5,000. I did perform random immunization. Okay. Now, if we go down here, I'm pretty sure I pressed that button. I'll check in a second. Go down here and we run it forward. Okay. Uh, did I not? Okay. Um, hey, come on, come on. I think it's going through and, and performing this communication probably. Okay, is that that's it? Yes, there we are. Who are these people that are shown in all this gray? Why are why did every, all these people turn gray? You tell me that they were yeah, yeah they were coming, we're coming up public. Okay, so now we're running it forward, right? Um, it's it's taking its uh. It's times there, um, and uh, but 
if they're running for it, how would we pause that the, the presence of singing on people might affect them? Become musical impact? Do you think they'll affect the spread? Yeah, I mean, uh, sight. Yeah. Okay, so so uh, Sunny postulates that it's going to slow down the impact. Why would that be? So that's correct. Why why is it? Yeah, because we have fewer susceptibles to infect, so it could take multiple tries for a given infective to infect someone, right? Um, and a lot of the times the infectives will be interfacing instead with with these uh with these folks who are already immune, right? Um so it could slow it down some. It didn't do enough. Did it do enough to wipe out the infection? No. No. Now we see this new wave, right? Um and there's a whole music genre about these waves. It's called new wave. Um but uh Sorry, <laughs> sometimes you'll see my humor come through. Um, but uh, you'll see, like, uh, there's a game of chance here as to how much they'll classify this, right? Um, or how much they'll catch. Uh, and and here the the this wave is creeping out, and it hasn't really caught at a bigger level yet. But we'll see it go through. But broadly, it's pretty similar phenomenon to before. So it did slow it down a bit. I'm not going to show you that. If we vaccinated more people, it would slow it down more. Let's now stop this, uh, stop this one. And let's go and we're going to go through and give another type of immunization. Oh, it was starting to catch just as I stopped it. Okay. Um, so we're going to do something similar. We're going to set this to go and we'll run it for about 30 or so days pretty similar and we're again going to choose about 5000 people but we're going to we're going to be a bit more judicious about those 5000 who they are okay so here we go it's starting to spread standard business right the only ones people, so it's out. People are to recover, et cetera. We'll let it go for a little bit more, and then we will pause it. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna press that pause up there. Okay, about 31, pretty similar to. I'm gonna I'm gonna again choose about 5,000 people, but this time I'm gonna be more judicious. If you could choose. Who to who to vaccinate here? Who, who do you think might be a especially good target to vaccinate? Be especially if you only had a, a small number of shots around, small number of vaccines. Who might you vaccinate? Um, uh, someone. Yeah, yeah. Name again. Yeah. Nick. Uh, maybe like kind of a range outside the infection one, but it's not like that. Exactly. Uh, we'll put in place a a barrier, as it were, of people who are immunized. And depending on how many doses we have, it may or may not be a complete wall, right? Um, but it may be enough to block it um, uh, effectively, or it may fall short, in which case, you know, we'll, we'll see the consequences uh, in terms of the behavior. So, so, oh, uh, hey, I meant to vaccinate. Hey, um, I didn't press the button. Here we go. Uh, we want to do this one, outbreak response immunization. And this is one of the areas that we've helped inform uh, understanding public health authorities and public work with uh, medical health officers to understand how to apply these in certain areas like pertussis immunization. Okay, great, thanks. I want to wait. I don't want to kill it. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay. Um, okay. And now we want to, hey, okay. So what's happened? Did I, did something? Uh, unable to FVG element with ID. Okay. Possibly deleted already. That's not a great sign. Okay. Um, so why is this not? Working. Hey, come on. Um, 
Well, if it's if it's not working here, what's that? Yeah, I'll run it again. That, that's really strange. Um, but uh, I've seen weirder things in my time. Okay, here we go. So we'll run it again. If you learn this uh, developer panel up here, you can actually uh, do things. For example, you could pull this down and you could say run until time 30. Okay. Uh, and we'll run it out for, for 30 days. Oh, what happened next time? <laughs> Why is it running so quick? Anyone? Why is it running so quick? If the first person, I think, un unless it's just off the, uh, now it seems to be taking some more time. So I, I'm guessing it, it is, but hey, come on. Oh, come on. I think this is interacting with Zoom's codec for video. It has, you know, is that right? Ah, uh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, maybe it's doing garbage collection, right? Garbage collection in Java. Okay. Um, okay. What? You don't believe that? You know about garbage collection in Java, don't you? You folks not know about garbage collection? It seems like it's going to be one of us. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's possible. Okay, so come on. Come on. I think I'm going to pause it. Yeah, it would go, continue, and then it pauses. You never know. You never seems to pick up again. You got to one shot it. Well, mine will only work if it's at one time speed. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I literally, for the take phone things, I have to run it at one time. Okay, okay. we need to, we need to have you talk to it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Let's uh, do you folks. Any of you folks have Macs that are having this problem? Okay, yeah, because on, on M123 Max, there's uh, some known issue, and you can install a certain thing, and it'll make it faster. It, Wade figured it out in my lab. Um, so it would be best. To, okay, so here we're at con 30 for better or for worse. Let's, let's go now. Let's, let's drag this out. Come on. Um, you tell me when is it 5,000? Okay, thank you. Let's see if you guys are any nine. So, the right here, okay, yeah, okay. And now let's let's try this again. Okay, vaccinated 356 people. Thanks. Are you sure that was okay? <laughs> maybe, maybe it was, uh, maybe it was, um. Like oh yeah, yeah. I think that that may be it. It it just there's 356 people on the periphery. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna run it forward. Aha. Okay. What's gonna happen now? We corral the the cordon sanitaire. Ah, uh, there's a sanitary cordon around this that prevents it from spreading, right? And it was only 356 people, not 5,000 in the end of the year. But by choosing those 356 judiciously, we were able to stop the infection and its uh, cracks. Uh, uh, Mr. Todd. Yes. So this would be a prime example of one of those lock-in effects we talked about in the video? Uh, you can get lock-in. I'll show you some lock-in with a separate model that are more built into the system. This does, you're, you're absolutely right, that this knocks the system into a different basin that sticks. And that is, is um, that leads it to a very different outcome. So we sort of knocked it from a situation where it was fated to have these waves, et cetera, to a very likely to a situation where it will entirely recover here. Um, and we did that by a modest amount of force in this case, namely by vaccinating 356 well-targeted people. So models let us ask not just what if questions about the world, what if, you know, what if people can lose immunity? These are questions, by the way, I was asked. 
um, by our stakeholders in northern communities. You know, during the COVID-19 pandemic, when we were helping communities design strategies tailored to those communities to protect them against COVID-19, I get asked strategies, uh, get asked questions, what if, what if people lose their immunity to COVID-19? How will that affect the robustness of the strategy? And we to put it in here. But beyond that, we can ask what if questions about actions we can take and compare the impact of different interventions. And we saw that. Vaccinating 5,000 random people versus, in the end, was 353 well-chosen people. And it turns out the latter was more effective than the former. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uses of models to ask what if questions not only about the nature of the world, but about possible courses of action. Um, can be very effective. Okay, now um, I'm going to stop this recording and we'll begin another recording uh, uh, on the subject of, of the three types of modeling. Um, so here we go.